plug-in hybrids are becoming more and more common on Britain's roads, thanks to tax incentives for company car drivers and the wider adoption of electrification by car makers. Yet it's still not that often that we test a plug-in hybrid, which at first glance feels built for performance over and above efficiency. So the Cupra Formenta is going to be an interesting one, especially as it's the first car from the Spanish brand to get a plug on the front wing. Cupra started out by building variants of the Seat Leon and the Seat Ateca, but the Formenta is a standalone model which isn't available with the Seat badge on the nose. You can get one with a pure petrol engine, but as this is driving electric, we'll be sticking to the hybrid model for today. So if you like that kind of thing, then please do give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the Driving Electric YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos go live. There are two versions of the Formenta that use plug-in hybrid power. The cheaper model has a 1.4 litre petrol engine and combined with the electric motor, it produces 201 brake horsepower. And yet, thanks to that electrical assistance, it'll emit as little as 27 grams per kilometre of CO2, while returning official fuel economy of up to 235 miles per gallon. While that sounds too good to be true, it could be possible if you plug in regularly. The car we've got to test here though is the more expensive version, which uses the same engine and electric motor, but with the power ramped up to 242 brake horsepower. It emits a bit more CO2 at 33 grams per kilometer, but never fear company car drivers, all versions of the Formenta fall into the 11% tax bracket for super low yearly costs. The battery has a usable capacity of 12.8 kilowatt hours, which means the official all-electric range for the Formenta stands at 34 miles. We managed around 20 miles on a single charge, and while the official mile per gallon figures are in the hundreds, we only saw 39 miles per gallon after the battery ran flat. Just look at the Formenta and you know it's meant to be sporty. The front end has a bit of SEAT design language in there with the distinctive LED lights and the air ducts on the lower bumper. But then you've got this huge Cupra badge on the front to let all the neighbours know it's something a bit unusual. At the back, there's even more sporty details, such as the bulging wheel arches, the big exhausts and a wide rear light bar, plus the roof spoiler. It's also covered in SUV-like trinkets, such as the roof rails and the subtly raised ride height. It's bound to catch some attention just for the way it looks, if not by people wondering what the heck it is. But Cupra has got some way to go to get the kind of brand recognition it needs alongside more mainstream rivals. But we reckon they're well on their way if they keep producing cars that look as good as this. Like on the outside, there are a few clues inside the cabin to show that Cupra is closely related to Seat. There's loads of switch gear, such as the gear selector, the vents, the stalks, and the buttons for the lights and windows that are straight out of the Seat range. In fact, all of these bits are used on loads of models from the VW group which means quality is good. Everything feels well put together. It could be a bit more exciting though. With the dramatic exterior design, it feels like the interior could do with a bit more flair. Plus, there's no buttons for the aircon controls, just these awkward sliders, which aren't very good to use when you're driving. They look slick when you sat still, but once you're on the road and you're going over bumps, they just aren't very good to use. You do at least get a big 12 inch touchscreen display which has nice large icons that are easy to see and flick through. You also get smartphone connectivity and sat nav on the screen. Plus with all plug-in Formentors there is wireless phone charging too. Hybrids like the Formenta are only able to reach their lofty official fuel economy figures if you charge up as often as possible, as they rely on the short electric range being used for short trips and the engine only coming on for longer journeys. There's no rapid charging capability, so you're most likely going to be using either a three pin plug or ideally a home wall box charger. 
The latter will take about three and a half hours to fill the Formentor's battery from zero to 100%, which is par for the course when it comes to plug-in hybrids. All that really matters is that it's easy to plug in and charge up fully every night so you have a full battery in the morning. So we love the way the Cupra Formentor looks inside and out, but it's distinctly less exciting to drive. This is the more powerful model and even this version doesn't feel particularly sporty to drive. And part of that reason is that the engine sounds a little bit strained under hard acceleration. You can select a Cupra driving mode and that adds fake engine noise to the cabin, but it also makes the steering too heavy. Still, at least the Formenta does have good grip when going round corners. There's still plenty of performance to enjoy though. The electric motor and the turbocharged engine combined produce plenty of shove. So you get pinned back into your seat when you put your foot to the floor. It means you can enjoy this performance at low revs if you don't mind using up the battery. Zero to 62 miles per hour takes seven seconds in this 242 brake horsepower model, or 7.8 seconds in the 201 brake horsepower version. That's not quite hot hatch territory anymore, but it's close and it certainly feels quick enough on the public roads. The big wheels look like they might crash into potholes, but actually they deal with bumps in the road reasonably well. The Cupra is slightly firm, but not uncomfortable. Which spec you choose will depend on the engine you opt for. The lower powered car comes in V1 and V2 form, but the higher powered model is available in VZ1 and VZ2 trim levels. Along with the huge touchscreen display, the entry level V1 comes with LED lights, 18 inch alloys, three zone climate control, sports seats, and a digital dash instead of traditional dials behind the steering wheel. VZ1 trim on the higher powered car has all this plus 19 inch alloys, different seats, a powered tailgate, a reversing camera, plus that adaptive suspension we mentioned earlier. V2 brings most of that kit to the less powerful models, while VZ2 trim has different leather seats with a Cupra logo in the headrest, a heated steering wheel, plus a rear diffuser with twin exhaust pipes and a bit of extra safety kit. Of course, if you're sitting in the back, then you don't have the high-tech dashboard to wow you. It's all about space. Luckily, there's enough room for an adult to sit comfortably with plenty of legroom and headroom. Of course, depending on where the driver has their seat positioned. The sporty design on the outside means that the rear windows taper upwards sharply, so there's not as much light in here as there could be. Plus, all plug-in formenters come with tinted windows as standard, so it's a little bit dark in the back. The Formenta is available with a normal petrol engine, as well as the plug-in hybrid form, and that version is more practical, with a 420 litre boot and a larger 55 litre fuel tank. The plug-in model has 345 litres of boot space and a 40 litre fuel tank. However, it's designed to be good at doing shorter trips more often, so if you plug it in, that won't be a big issue. The boot space is more of a concern, and while there's enough space for a few suitcases or a buggy, it's a long way off some of the more practical family car options, such as the Skoda Octavia VRS Hybrid, which has 490 litres of space with the rear seats up. More importantly, it's less than you get in the Formenta's main rivals, the Audi Q3 or the BMW X1 plug-ins. The Cupra Formenta has to succeed on two fronts. On one hand, it needs to represent what the fledgling Cupra brand stands for, power and performance. But on the other hand, it needs to be a convincing and cheap to run plug-in hybrid. And on our first encounter, it's a bit of a mixed bag. We love the practical interior, the low running costs and the comfortable ride. Plus those sharp looks will turn plenty of heads on the high street. But as a performance car, it's less convincing. It's fast, but the engine just isn't as exciting as the styling suggests it should be. Head to drivingelectric.com for all the latest electric car advice, news and reviews. And check us out on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. 
Make sure you subscribe to the Driving Electric YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified when a new video goes live.